I know, I know you're like, man, really? This is a book review? I'm not really interested in that. Please watch this one. This is very important for data engineers, data scientists, machine learning engineers. It's the best book in uh, AI that I've read this year, and it would might be the best one that you read this year. Make sure you tune in. Hi folks, Thomas Sinson here with ThomasSinson.com and today is another episode of Big Data Big Questions. So today's a book review and this is a very important book in artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning in that era. But it's not only a book that I think that data engineers should read, data scientists and machine learning engineers, but people outside of tech and in, in, you know, inside of tech that maybe don't even do anything analytics perspective. So I think this is a very important book. It's called AI Superpowers. China, Silicon Valley, and the New World Order. It's by Kai Fu Lee. And so Kai Fu Lee, great, you know, great person in the artificial intelligence realm, been around for a long time. Uh, one of, uh, you know, worked at Apple, Google, uh, Microsoft, and um, one of the first people who, uh, I think in the 80s, actually uh, implemented a portion of, you know, speech to text uh, that was supposed to be on the Mac. Think about, you know, all the things that we're doing with, you know, voice remote controls and all those other portions. He was actually working on that. And I think it was part of his thesis when he graduated, kind of how he, how he progressed that way. So huge voice in, in that era. He's also an accomplished writer and he's a venture capitalist um, in, uh, in, in Taiwan and really, really ingrained and involved in what's going on in uh, China from a data analytics and artificial intelligence perspective. So he gets to give talks, you know, to government, you know, universities all around, all around the country and uh, just all around everywhere. So uh, really, really, really good resume for the book. So why should you read this book? He talks about the future. He talks about all the things that we talk about on this, but from a high level, like, hey, what's gonna, what's it gonna impact in five, 10, 20, 25 years? So if you wanna know kind of what the future is from somebody who's been in the industry and doing it a lot longer than myself, pick up the book, get the audio book, do whatever you can. So this, I like this book so much that in, um, I, give a pre I gave a presentation back a month ago I bought five copies and handed out like just just throughout the presentation just to make sure people were paying attention because I, I like that book this much. So <laughs> definitely, definitely take it as a recommendation. So let's talk about, you know, what I really pulled away from the book and, you know, what my favorite points were. The very first thing I talked about in the book is how deep learning we're now in the era of implementation. Right. So we've done all the research. Deep learning is nothing new. It kind of goes through the history, but we're actually in the air where we're implementing it and having these applications and having these algorithms solve problems for us, right? I talked about it before, but you know, look at look at what you're doing from a remote control or talking into your talking into your phone or chatbots for customer service or you know what we're trying to do with auto assisted driver uh, driving cars, right? So we don't have fully driverless cars, but we have lane assist changing cars that can park themselves. These are all things that are being implemented right now, right? So this is you know we're we're kind of through the research portion. We're, you know, we've, we've gone through that and we're still getting some breakthroughs in it, but they're, you know, they're not huge breakthroughs. They're just implementation, other further implementations of deep learning, kind of like what I've talked about with, you know, um, GANs, right? Like, you know, that's something I'm really interested in, you know, that was kind of pushed out by Ian Goodfellow in 2014. So we're in the era now where companies, enterprises, startups, you know, governments, state, local, you know, countries, you know, are all using and implementing AI solutions into everything. So that was kind of a good level set to say, hey, this is not something that we're talking about, you know, from the future. These are things that are being worked on today. So I thought that was really a really good portion to kind of speak. And I never kind of really heard it talked about like, hey, we're implementing, right? Like I've known we were implementing, but I never kind of really thought about different phases of uh, deep learning. So the next portion that I didn't really understand, and you probably take it from the title and just with uh, Kai Fu Lee's background and resume uh, in, in China and Asia, um, I didn't understand how much data China had, right? Like I, I knew, you know, I knew when we talk about it, you know, from a data perspective, you know, that person with the most data tends to win, but I didn't realize how much data was being generated in China. And he kind of goes through some points around why they've sped ahead of the world around data and some of the other things of generating it, some of it having to be with going from a cash to skipping the step to credit card, which, you know, in America and other, you know, other countries, you know, credit cards were, were, were pretty popular going straight from cash to um, mobile payment. And so, you know, that, that innovation there alone gave just 
enormous amounts of data, right? Like every transaction, everything that happens is on a, mo you know, on a mobile device and you can pull different things. One of my favorite examples when they were talking about it, um, you know, around it is like, okay, yeah, we track them from the perspective of, you know, credit cards. So yes, you know, in, in other countries, we, we, we track those credit cards, you know, those transactions and you can tie it back to uh, people that are, use, that are using that credit cards. But on a mobile device, there's different things. So there's even, you know, they're even taking, there's a weak feature and I forget, I forget who the, uh, who the lender is, but there's a, there's a lender and what they'll do, calculate some kind of credit score about your likelihood to pay back. And they use your battery, your battery life as a weak feature, which man, my battery life right now, <laughs> like it goes away so fast, but that's, they use that as a weak feature. And so if you think about that, like, you know, why would a financial institution care about some of that? But why not take in all the data, right? And see, you know, see kind of what shakes out. So that was, you know, one example, but it, you know, a ton of, ton of different examples about, what's going on from that perspective, but you know, the, just the amount and sheer enormous amounts of data that are, that are, is being generated in China. I did not realize how much, how much they were eclipsing and what their proportion is to the world. Next, another thing that I didn't, you know, I'd heard about the AlphaGo um, challenge where, you know, the machine beat the world's best AlphaGo player. And you know how, you know, I, I knew that was a kind of a significant deal. I had, honestly hadn't played Go before. So I know that there's some, some differences to how that works. Versus like chess and then obviously checkers, which, you know, the computer computers beat <laughs> the best checkers player in the 50s. So um, but I didn't I didn't really understand the significance from a, from a go perspective. And I didn't understand how big of a deal it was. So, you know, Kai Fu Lee in this book, he talks talks about it, says it's the Sputnik um, kind of phenomena for AI for uh, China. And part of the reason was there was over 200 million people that watched that happen uh, live, which I didn't realize that. I mean, that's huge. I mean, you think about. I don't know how many people watch a Super Bowl, but I mean that 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 probably that probably eclipses the Super Bowl even. Uh, but if it doesn't, I mean, getting two hundred to two hundred fifty million people to watch any one live event nowadays is huge. So the fact that all that was uh, watched then, you know, and that kind of translated into uh, China's government policy, kind of pushing and diving more into innovation with uh, artificial intelligence. So. AlphaGo a lot a lot bigger than I thought thought it would be. So another another great point that I pulled out of the book. Um, the last thing you know I, I've talked and you know read a couple other books and done reviews here around you know kind of what's going to happen from the perspective of all right where are we going how is this going to change work and the economy and some of the other things and so Kai Fu Lee kind of really digs into it. Uh, he takes a different approach. He had a TED talk on it too, so you can kind of see you know some events in his life kind of have changed the way he thinks about work and his relationship to you know, how much he works and spends time with his family. So it was really, I mean, really, you know, he, he kind of opened up to it, right? Like, you know, made himself vulnerable and talked about his own experiences. So it was really great to see that. But some of his predictions are based on that too. Like, what are some of the roles that, you know, can't be automated, right? When we think about it, artificial intelligence, think about what can be automated from this perspective now. And so he kind of digs in and goes into some of those and talks about, you know, roles and features and just kind of the way that we think about work too. Like there are a lot of interesting ideas, you know, that when we look at 10 to 20 years from now, when we talk about what's being automated and what, what the potential for jobs are, data engineers are still going to be around. <laughs> so that's what I took out of the, added some of that portion, but there are other roles, right. That are going to transform. And so he talks about that and kind of gives his, gives his thought process around that. So um, definitely want to check that out and, and, you know, kind of think about that. But I think it was, I think, I think that portion was really good. And it, it kind of opened my mind to a couple different things that I hadn't thought of. Not saying that I'm totally coming in and saying that I agree with every, every point on, you know, what jobs are going to be around and not be around, which once again, data engineers, data scientists, we're good to go. I think even, even Kai Fu Lee said so. So, <laughs> but you know, I thought, I thought that portion was really good. So all in all, I started this video by saying that I recommend it and I haven't changed my mind in the last nine to 10 minutes. So <laughs> go out, buy this book, buy it for your family members, share it with uh, people outside of tech, share it with people that aren't into analytics and be like, look, this is not just, this is not an analytics book. It is, but it's a tricky one, right? Just be like, Hey, it's about the future and get them to read it. I think it's a, I think it's a great read. Uh, definitely recommend for sure. The best artificial intelligence book I read this year, maybe even rivals last year. So I had some pretty good ones. Maybe I should go through and do another kind of book review and kind of see where they are, but I don't know. So if you have any questions or you have a book that you want me to review or you think I should read, or you think anybody in the audience should read, put it in the comment section here below. 
Reach out to me on Twitter. Find me on thomashenson.com forward slash big questions. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode and ring that bell. And I will see everyone next time.